So hi everyone, welcome to the next edition of uh, Vox Res. Um, if you remember in the last video, we reassembled the uh, Astra engine, put the air intake manifold back on and started her up. And unfortunately, we still had the horrible rattling noise. Um, so I've done a little bit further investigation. You may wonder why I'm dressed up like a doctor here today. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a performing open heart surgery or anything, but what I have done is I've bought one of these stethoscope devices um, it's got a nice long probe thing on the end of it and basically this enables you to poke around an engine um, put it on a metallic part and get an idea of where the uh, the noises are coming from um, I'm convinced it's still coming from the air intake manifold oh, just poke me eye out with the uh, with the probe there um, I'm convinced it's still coming out from the air intake manifold uh, the noise um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it down again but this time I'm going to go a little bit deeper and take off the actual uh, lower part of the intake manifold with the um, injectors in it um, and have a look at that i've seen that these can bung up really badly uh, especially if uh, oil changes haven't been performed properly so i uh, going to whip that off clean it up and have a look at that there's also some things called swirl flaps in there um, which i've heard can rattle as well um, so i think giving it a good clean and unbunging the uh, the, the little uh, uh, airways and stuff that are in there um, is a good thing to do anyway uh, we can also have a look inside the uh, intake ports on the cylinder head and see how gunked up they are um, and we'll take it from there so i'm going to go and take that all apart again off camera because you don't really want to watch me doing the the stuff i've already done um, and i'll come back to you as soon as i've got that apart and got this this new piece off right so um we've got the inlet manifold off again um there it is no, it's not. It's back in the garage. But anyway, um, as you can see, it's off. And the bit we're going to try and get off now is this bit here. Where are we? As you can see, me. it's a bit difficult to film and point at the same time. So, just here. That's better, you can see. So, just here. This is where the... Um, upper part of the inlet manifold bolts on and back up here somewhere is the injector rail and the fuel injectors and if you can see those on the camera and we've got to get some bolts out so there's some bolts there one oh, where are we there and another one there so in all there's ten we've got to try and get off and they're right small down there you can see there's some right at the bottom of the uh, engine facing away from me so they're going to be a bit tricky um, so I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and hopefully we'll be able to get these out um, I think there's a few electrical connectors up this end here that need connecting just here um, so yeah fingers crossed we'll be able to get that out there's also a pipe there this is the uh, EGR pipe there's a couple of bolts in there they've got to come out um, that's for the exhaust gas recirculation valve which is back up here somewhere up the top here so there you go I've got you guys back on the tripod now so um, you can see the sort of angle I'm trying to work at here right down underneath here but uh, we'll give it a go and uh, I'm sure we can get the part off So as you can see there, um, little torque screws and the usual torque bit to get that out. Nothing on this car seems to be very tight, which is a little bit worrying. I don't know why everything seems to be loose. All the bolts are loose.
this uh, little inspection mirror is coming in very very handy because I can poke it down the back of the engine um, and see what's going on where the screws are <clears throat> That's the first one out, a lot longer than I expected. Only uh, nine more to go. <coughs> now, one thing to point out here is there are two, or at least two at the minute, different size screws. Um, but the good thing is I don't think that this one will catch up on the thread. Um, because it's got to go right down the hole and the thread seems to be right down the bottom the last few threads of the hole so um, I don't think we're going to get them mixed up but uh, just need to take a note that there are different size screws going in here or coming out rather <coughs> yes yeah, so that's just a 30 mil nut on that end Another one out. Another long one. So I managed to get all the nuts and bolts off, and I just thought this was quite interesting. Um, looks like at some point we've had a little mouse or something nesting in here because there's a lot of little nutshells. I thought they were, um, but now I've released the manifold a little bit, I can see exactly what they are. Um, definitely little shells that have been chewed open and had the innards eaten out of them. So, some little visitor's been living here over the winter by the looks of it. But the good news is the manifold is now free. Um, I'm probably going to have to put the camera down because I've just got to free this wiring a little bit and hold this stuff up out of the way. Um, but other than that, I think it's just ready to come out. So um, let's see how it goes. So I've got the inlet manifold off, all the bottom half of it off. We've already seen the top off. Um, try and get down here so you can see. It's very difficult to see. Um, but that's where it came from, out of there. Um, you can see the studs that it was mounted on there and there. So that's where I said we had the two 30mm um, nuts. Um, and then the rest of these holes here and here and here had the torque screws in them. So you can see how tricky that was to um, to get to with the uh, with the manifold in place and hence using the little mirror. Right handy little gadget that was. Um, this is the EGR valve connector that goes, oh sorry, the EGR pipe. This goes up to the EGR valve which is up there. Um, we'll have a look at that, probably take that off and give it a clean at some point while well, we've got all this apart. Um, so let's go and have a look at the inlet manifold now. So here we are with the uh, the trusty inlet manifold um, that I thought might be causing a problem. Um, I'm not sure it is now, but um, we'll carry on and have a look at this and I'll try and explain a few bits. Now first of all, this port here, this groove in here, um, is the EGR valve or exhaust gas recirculation um, channel. And basically what happens there is if you see there's a little port there, um, and that's connected through to this little flange here and that flange is where the EGR pipe connects onto that we looked at in the engine bay um, so basically what happens is it sucks some of the uh, exhaust gases out and pumps them through this channel and it gets drawn in through this port here, here and here now the interesting thing is I don't think this is causing the rattle but if you look here not focusing very well, there we are, that's better these ports are actually bunged up here. I have seen videos and pictures of them clogged up all the way along here. But it's not even getting the gases sucked away anywhere because every single port just here, here, here and here is bunged up with carbon and oil and rubbish. So we need to give this a good clean. Now... Uh, the twin port design is now a little bit obvious. This is why this engine is called a twin port engine because there are two ports here, as you can see, eight all together. Um, and basically what happens is these ports here, I don't know if you can see inside there, I don't know if the lighting's very good. 
yeah you can see it in there there's a little valve a little butterfly valve and what happens is under normal um, running conditions this is closed so there's a vacuum valve on the end here and this is sucked closed I think I think that's the way it works anyway and under load these ports open to allow extra fuel in so I think under idle these should be shut and under load they should be open which is quite interesting actually because they're open now hmm might be worth investigating anyway the common fault with these is the mechanism and the joints let's turn that round that way like that so if you look closely at these each one has got like a little plastic bearing ball joint thing in it where it connects and then when this rod actuates it opens and closes the valves so that's open that's closed open close open close now what happens is these little bearings wear out and these flaps can rattle and this whole bar can rattle now i could feel this when it was on the car and it looked all right and it felt all right but i've got to see which end it is now this one at this end so if i wiggle these about you'll see look we start up the at this end no movement there nothing there either Mm, little bit there and when you get to this one you can see there's a lot of play in that and if you look very very closely you can see that there's damage this plastic bit inside it's worn away so I don't know whether that's the cause of our rattle um, the rattle seems a little bit too extreme to be that um, so if we turn it back over to the Twin port side again. It's a little bit of play in that. It's a little bit of play in all of them, to be honest. See, that one's interesting. That one's not doing it. I'm wondering if that is the cause of our problem, you know, because that one there is really rattly. Um, it's not the end that's damaged, I don't think. <clears throat> that one's definitely the worst for damage. That one may be a little bit loose. I don't know if you can see that on the video. Just here, but that is off centre. Let's see if we can... I need to put it up the other way. See if we can get to the flat and see what's going on. So I think it's a good place to leave it for this week. Um, as you can see, we've uh, taken off the lower inlet manifold and we have got a little bit of damage to some of the connectors to the uh, twin port valves. Um, I think I've got a, an idea about how to repair those. Um, so look out for that in the next video. Um, just like to wish you a happy new year. This is the first video of 2020. So I hope you all had a great time over the uh, Christmas and new year period. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe below. Um, I want to try and grow the channel this year if we can so the more of you watch and the more of you like the better uh, so just leaves me to say goodbye for now and i'll catch you in the next one